Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the fifth domain for this exam called Insert and Format Graphic Elements. Overall, this accommodates for 15 to 20% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at this domain with me. This video got a little bit long, so we're gonna break this up into two videos. In this second video, we're gonna cover the subdomains Add Text to Graphic Elements and modify graphic elements. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2019 exam and we're looking at the fifth domain called Insert and Format Graphic Elements. We're looking at the third subdomain called Add Text to Graphic Elements. The first thing that it tells us that we should be able to do is to add and modify text in text boxes. Right here I have text in this text box and I'm gonna scroll down and copy this line here. Something you could be asked to do is to cut or copy text and paste it within a text box. And of course you can just go ahead and type in the text box and that'll work. But with that copy text, I wanna caution you on the exam, you can just paste the text and notice that it kept the formatting that I pasted in. Something you might wanna consider for the exam is, depending on the question and what it says, is right clicking to paste using the keep text only so that the formatting stays the same. And if we needed to add to this, we could. After we pasted that, we could just type some text. It wouldn't be a big deal. Before we move on, let's go to the Drawing Tools Format tab because I do wanna show you this text group and notice that I can change my text direction. I can change my alignment. And if I have multiple text boxes, and this is an advanced concept, I can actually create a link between the two text boxes. So whatever doesn't fit in this first one will fill into the second one. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to add and modify text and shapes. So let me go ahead and make this lightning bolt just a little bit bigger. What we can do is right click on it to add text. Now this is a little bit of a weird shape to do this, but we can put in the text high and that'll work. Just like with my text box on the Drawing Tools Format tab, I have the text group and I can again change the text direction, align the text and I can create a link. But I also have the word art styles and I had this on the text box as well, but I can pop open this to apply this type of formatting to the text. I can change my text fill. I can add a text outline and I have some text effects here. So if I wanted to transform this to curve down, notice that was applied. And I'll go ahead and say this while we're here with this text. You can go to the home tab and use some of the settings in the font and paragraph group as well. The last thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to add and modify smart art graphic content. Right here I have my smart art graphic and this smart art graphic is a little bit more complicated just because you can add pictures in with the smart art in addition to text. I don't always like clicking in the text box to add text. This smart art graphic's not flat on my screen. While this is a big box, some of the other ones are not so big. I would use the text pane here to type in my text. So if I type in Peter Pan, I can collapse this text pane by just clicking the arrow. I have the smart art tools design tab and in my create graphic group, I also have the ability to add bullets. I can open the text pane from here. I can do right or left. I can demo and promo bullets. But I also want to show you this, the move up and down. Because there's pictures attached to this, if you need to move a bullet point, the best way to do it is to do it through the Create Graphic group by just clicking it up and down because it will pull everything, including the picture attached to it, and bring that with it. We're looking at the fourth subdomain, Modify Graphic Elements. The first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to position objects. With my picture selected, I have the Picture Tools Format tab and this is gonna be similar for the other objects shown on the screen. But with that object selected, I wanna to go to the Arrange group, and from here, I can position my object. If I click the Position dropdown, we have In Line With Text, but I can use the different Position With Text wrap settings to place it within my document window. And again, that's similar with the other objects on the screen. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to wrap text around objects. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the middle of this document text over here so that we can see how it interacts with the different things. With this selected, I'm gonna go back to the Picture Tools Format tab 
We're back in the range group and we have this drop down for wrap text. Currently it's set with square, but if I do top and bottom, notice that it pushed the text above and below. Inline does this and for inline, clicking and dragging a picture is a little bit different. It's not as simple. It will actually put it in line with the text. Notice that it split her. We can put behind or in front of, should be familiar with these different settings. In addition to that, I did that from the ribbon, but with the image selected, I actually have the ability to change some layout options here. And if we needed to see more, we could click see more as well. This window will give us even more advanced settings than what we were looking at because we can use absolute position or relative. We can do some alignment. That's for position. For text wrapping, we have a lot of the same things that we saw in the drop down, but we can change our text wrap settings instead of both sides. Maybe we want left only and we can change the distance from the text. And while we're here, why not? Let's talk about size. This image right now has an absolute, but we could change some of the settings here. Maybe we want a rotation of 15. If we're looking to change the height and we don't want it to have the height and the width change with my keying in of maybe a height, we can uncheck this box, lock aspect ratio, and it will allow me to key in individual units. We'll click OK. The last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to add alternative text to objects for accessibility. With my image here selected, I'm on the picture tools format tab. In the accessibility group, I'm going to click alt text, and that's going to allow me to type alternative text for this picture. So I'll go ahead and type in my name. And now that has alt text. We'll close out of this. You should be able to find that alt text button for these different objects on their ribbon. However, you can also right click on different objects and you can click edit alt text for this camera to open that pane up as well. My last thing that I want to add for this entire domain is on these ribbons, if you don't immediately see some things that you want to do, I want to encourage you to open up the dialog launcher boxes because that's going to give you a pane or window and it's going to give you some more advanced features to help you carry out your task on the exam.